Yogendra Yadav, if I can start with you, Jasmine Shah of the Aam Aadmi Party just uh, was finishing his remark, uh, remarks in this uh, uh, wheel by saying that AAP is now the natural alternative to the BJP, the Congress is out of the picture and they have two seats under their belt. Mamta Banerjee's experiment to go beyond Bengal in the East didn't work. Would you agree, uh, given the historic win by Mr. Kejriwal and Bhagwant Man in Punjab, uh, that they are now in pole position uh, to be at the helm of whatever formation comes up uh, to take on the BJP in 2024. Uh, there's a lot to say about today's results, but since Jasmine just spoke, I thought I'd get your reactions to that. Yogendra ji. Uh, Barkha, I didn't manage to hear much of what Ahmadmi Party spokesperson had to say, so I've just heard what you said. And I don't mean to enter into any debate. If that is what you had in mind, I'll have to excuse myself. No, no, there's no debate. I I'm just asking you for your impressions of the state of politics uh, yeah. today. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. On Punjab verdict, I would just say that, yes, I mean, it's absolutely, uh, I mean, BJP has had a resounding victory in uh, Uttar Pradesh. They have reasons to be excited. Punjab uh, Aam Aadmi Party has had more than a resounding victory today in Punjab. So they have reasons to be even more excited. Uh, whether they become the natural and national alternative as they would wish to and as they have every reason to wish to be would depend on uh, whether the party is able to uh, address some of the challenges that it faces when it scales itself up. You've already spoken about TMC's inability to scale itself up uh, that we have seen. In the case of Aam Aadmi Party, it is yet to be seen. Uh, to my mind, the success of Aam Aadmi Party in Punjab is above all a vote of no confidence in the entire political establishment for their incompetence, for their insensitivity, for their corruption. People were just fed up and they turned to the one party they could see, which seemed like an alternative. Um, this may not be the best day, but as a journalist, you would remember Barkha that in the last five years, Aam Aadmi Party did not manage to play much of an opposition in Punjab. They had 20 M MLAs. They ended up with about 10. I do not recall any major agitation, protest, or oppositional role that Aam Aadmi played, Party played in, uh, in Punjab in the last five years. So people were not looking at their performance in Punjab. They were looking for some hope, which they thought came from outside. The challenges. The yeah. first challenge is that unlike Delhi, which is a revenue surplus state, Punjab is a state which is seriously in debt. How would any political party, and this is not just Aam Aadmi Party, how would any political party manage that state and fulfill all the promises that they have made would be the first challenge. Yeah. The second challenge is agriculture. Punjab agriculture is stagnating. So far, Aam Aadmi Party has been primarily an urban party with very little engagement with the rural and agricultural policies. So the second challenge would be to actually come up with policy, agriculture policies, not just some jumla, policies which would actually address the acute agrarian stagnation and crisis of Punjab. The third challenge is that uh, Aam Aadmi Party has... Uh, got the support of the six above all jat six as all the surveys are showing along with others as well uh in the expectation that the party would take a strident secular position in the last two years Ahmadmi party's performance especially its silence during the delhi riots have raised many questions and the challenge therefore is to actually prove to the minorities that the party actually takes a secular line the fourth challenge is that uh, Punjab in the last 500 years has resisted the rule of Delhi Darbar. Uh, now, Aam Aadmi Party would obviously have to change its decision-making patterns because yeah. any impression of being governed from Delhi is something Punjabis would resist with everything they have. And finally, the challenge is of uh, uh, addressing the problem of... Uh, Nasha, liquor and drugs, uh, given the track record of Aam Aadmi Party in Delhi, they would really need to change tax and to come up with something alternative, something very different. 
If they manage to address these challenges, of course, they have every reason to emerge as the national alternative, especially in okay. view of can, Congress's can, dismal performance. But that remains. Can I reasonable. ask you? Can I ask you to actually also comment on Uttar Pradesh? And uh, of course, Jasmine is still with us. We can get him to pick up some of these points. But Amit Puri of the BJP also hasn't spoken. So, Yogendra Ji, your take on uh, Uttar Pradesh, the decimation of the Congress, uh, two point five percent officially on the EC, but actually one percent probably is where the Congress vote share is going to end up for non. BJP parties, the Congress is now perhaps the weakest link. Um, Barkha, there isn't much to be spoken about the Congress in Uttar Pradesh. It was a non-starter. It is a non-entity. Uh, and I would say uh, about Congress, I would say this about Samajwadi Party, the easiest thing in the world then is to believe that the, the one who was defeated got everything wrong. Uh, Congress did not get everything wrong in Uttar Pradesh, but they were simply outside the contest. There was some energy in what the Congress did. There was some freshness, smart selection of candidate for a party which has no hope at all. In fact, their vote share have shrunk. Uh, so there's not much to comment upon that. The larger picture of uh, Uttar Pradesh, and I think that's something we should confront uh, honestly, because if we say it's people's mandate, then I cannot celebrate people's mandate when it suits me, when Mamta Banerjee manages to defeat BJP, and then um, not respect it when it doesn't suit me. So in all Absolutely. humility, we should accept this mandate for what it is uh, and accept it as a defeat, not because we were in contest. People like me had, I mean, we had no candidate, but we had stakes in this election. Everyone, Barkha, you, I had stakes in this election because it concerns our next generation. And the fact is, we have lost. We have, and there should be, I mean, they, nothing can, uh, nothing can redeem this. No reference to percentage of votes of Samajwadi party or this or that. I mean, they, these are all alibis. The fact is that uh, we lost it. Those who believe in constitutional values lost it. Those who speak of Gandhi, Baba Saheb, Bhagat Singh, uh, we lost it. And we did not lose it to some alien outside force. We lost it because our own people decided against it. So that poses a very, very serious challenge. And Uttar Pradesh is a moment to really introspect for us. To my mind, the answer, you must have heard it earlier from me. My answer is simply this, that uh, the earlier ruling class, those who have ruled this country for the first 50, 60 years, are squarely responsible for squandering away three biggest resources of this country, our nationalism, our religious, uh, religious traditions, including Hinduism, and our cultural heritage. Our ruling class was deracinated, did not pay attention to these things. And as a result of this, those who have no claim whatsoever, should have had no claim on nationalism, today are the champions of nationalism. Those who do not understand our cultural heritage talk about culture and tradition all the time. And once you establish that kind of a relationship, which BJP has in much of North India and West India, then the they have a culture connect with the voter, which yeah. goes beyond the calculus of losses and gains. I want to learn a big perspective because Yogendra, you are a politician today, but you have studied politics more than the rest of us put together. You had once said that the Congress needs to, you know, in a sense, be raised to the ground before a new opposition building can be built. And there was a lot of backlash to you when you said that. Your words have come true today. What is the future you see for India's opposition today? Uh, Barkha... <clears throat> I'm not interested in forecasting the future. I'm interested in making the future, what we can make of this future. Because for me, it's not an armchair exercise of trying to say what will happen. You would appreciate and understand. I'm concerned, I'm worried, and today I'm deeply disturbed because this is about the future of our generations. This is about the future of our country. And at the moment, this republic is being dismantled brick by brick every day. And sadly, the public has been mobilized, like in so many other countries, <clears throat> like in Russia, like in Turkey, Hungary, Sri Lanka, so many other places. Public is being mobilized to dismantle the republic. This is a very grave challenge. You cannot overcome it by pointing fingers at the people. 
you have to be with them. You have to understand them. So to my mind, in the short term, which is up to 2024, the road was very tough. It got tougher today. And what we need is, uh, so what needs to be done, to my mind, is genuine opposition, which to my mind doesn't reside so much in the sunset, but actually on the sarak. So strengthening of movements, satta se sangharsh or samaj se samvad. Uh, this is what is needed. And by Samaj Se Sambad, I mean those who have voted for BJP. I may dislike the ideology. I do dislike the ideology of BJP. I do consider RSS as anti-national. But those who vote for BJP are not anti-national. They are my brothers. They are my sisters. My These are people I must relate to. I must speak their language. I must speak their metaphor. I must understand their concerns. So from one, the one thing that we need to learn from RSS today is bow your head, go to people, listen to them, and respond to them in their vocabulary, in their language. If we do so till 2024, and provided other things are also done, uh, the one proposal I have is creation of a truth army to take on the troll army, which is completely vitiating the culture of this country. Uh, we also need to do to intens something to intensify the agitations which are truly taking on this regime on the ground. And then there is a question of oppositional coordination, not opposition unity. We don't need a grand gutmandan of all the opposition, hmm. but we need a political coordination, synergizing of opposition. These three things need to be done. Today, the job has become more difficult, but the only saving grace in today's verdict is that it may have alerted uh, millions of us to the real nature of the danger and challenge. It is time to sit up and sometimes crisis is the best moment to sit up, reflect and change the direction in which you want to move. Okay, but you know, Yogendra Ji, I just have to push you back on one thing to explain. You said very rightly that fingers can't be pointed at people. And that is one thing to learn from the RSS, to bow your head and keep working. But you also said the Republic is being dismantled. Now, this election is a free and fair process. The people have seen their future in UP, in the BJP, also in the other states, more or less, except Goa, which was a bit tighter. So what, when you say the republic is being dismantled and the people are being mobilized for that, what do you mean by that? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked me, Barkha, because I think the people are absolutely somehow scandalized by the idea that someone can say that a electoral mandate can actually produce very strange consequences. To all of them, I would wish to remind because BJP people are particularly offended when I say this. I would humbly remind them that Congress used to win every single election in this country for first 30 years. What did Johnson do in those days? Did Johnson say, oh, must have, they must have governed this country beautifully in order to win. They must have done wonderful work because they are winning. No, Johnson did not say that. They said there is something wrong in what the Congress was doing. Ram Manohar Lohia did not do that. He questioned the Congress, interrogated the Congress. So you can respect the verdict. And respecting the verdict is to say that Mr. Adityanath, if he becomes the chief minister, is a legitimate chief minister of Uttar Pradesh. He has every right to govern. And I have every right to criticize, to question, to account, right. to hold them responsible. This is what democracy is. I'm surprised that people can't make this elementary distinction. And to point out the consequences, Barkha, you would know the 20th, 20th century model of killing democracy was that someone would come on television and say, from tomorrow onwards, there is no democracy in the country. We constitution doesn't work and things of that kind. That was a crude model. 21st century of model of destroying democracy. And you can learn it from Mr. Putin. You can learn it from Mr. Erdogan. You can learn it from Hungary. You can learn it from many places. The 21st century model is to say, I love democracy. To actually mobilize once sporadic popular consent. Generating popular consent occasionally is integral to demolition of democracy in the 21st century. Okay. This is what Mr. Trump was trying to do. This is what has happened all over the world. So what is so strange if I say that about India? This is a real danger to democracy all over the world. And the idea is not to say, therefore, people are idiot. No, that's not the point. 
The point is, therefore, we are wrong in communicating to them. Therefore, we must examine our failures. Therefore, we must learn to speak to them. Therefore, we must learn to be more humble than we have been. The rulers, the anglicized, deracinated rulers of this country need to learn something from verdicts of this kind. That's what I'm saying. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.